Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I am uh, out here in the Black Hills of South Dakota, just getting ready to start work uh, tomorrow. So by the time this video comes out, I'll already be pretty much elbows deep with my job at Memphis Shades. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what we have or maybe purchasing a windshield or a fairing, uh, come by and see us. We're on the JMP lot in Sturgis uh, out back. So I wanted to make this video for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, to kind of give you a glimpse into what it's like before the rally, a lot of my friends are already here. They're already working. Some of them are just hanging out. And there's uh, there's some characters uh, out here in the Black Hills National Forest. I took off on my own and uh, went down some forest access roads further into the Black Hills. I sort of did some exploring there and kind of got away from everything. Another thing that sort of occurred to me is uh, in the current conditions we're living in in the world, uh, travel has uh, by and large become uh, sort of a cost prohibitive affair. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of folks that, uh, that wanted to be here and, uh, and just can't quite swing it uh, due to the price of fuel and, uh, and with the, the absolutely insane uh, inflation that's going on right now. If you're one of those people, uh, I hope that you can maybe take uh, uh, a little bit of grain of, uh, of enjoyment out of this video and be able to sort of satiate uh, your, uh, your Sturgis needs. Um, to whatever extent possible. So as always, if you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as usual, I've included an optional donate link in the drop box if you'd like to contribute to this project. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road. Picking up from last week's episode, we join our man in Sturgis, South Dakota as he heads into the Black Hills National Forest. It had been a hot, crazy journey to get this far, and with the Black Hills Motorcycle Rally just around the corner and your man working for Memphis Shades, it was time to find a nice shady spot to cool off and rest. Luckily I knew of one. There's always a little trailblazing involved when I first show up here since the place is overgrown and believe me when I say there's no shortage of holes, stumps, and rocks hiding below the tall grass. What's up? This is Aaron. And what's your name again, man? Oak. Oak. Hanging out here in the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota and uh, cooking some chicken on the ground. It uh, sounds like a good idea to me. Nobody mowed this year. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty tall, but it'll get stamped down, you know? Yeah, yeah. eventually. Eventually, this whole thing is just going to be flat, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, you'll see pass. With a couple of... Uh, weeds popping out here and there. Somebody's gonna camp right there, right there, right next to you. Oh, of course. <laughs> brand new? Yes, sir. Well, new to me. <laughs> new to you? How y'all doing, man? What's up? See what you mean about that motor. Isn't it? I mean, it's, it's almost horizontal to the ground mm -hmm. where they put so much of that weight of the top end down low and forward. Yeah. I still had a good week and a half to get settled in before work. As I was going about my routine in town, I rolled my ankle and strained my knee, which quickly swelled up to the size of a softball. Messed up my knee, man, uh, yesterday. I uh, rolled my ankle, torqued my knee up, so it's fucked up, frankly. So uh, I've been uh, periodically icing it, trying to stay off of it. I got my uh, cooler on the back uh, with some ice, and I'm just periodically icing my leg and just kind of hobbling around luckily i don't have far i'm uh, going in here they're having sort of a presentation on the defunkification uh, of america or of the world uh, during the punk movement 
I actually like both funk and punk, uh, but the uh, I like the concept. I'm intrigued. You know, looking at the, the building blocks of what becomes funk, we looked at how funk dealt with social issues in the early 70s, and now we're looking at uh, what happens after that. So yeah, let's jump in. Um, the place to go in New York for punk and, and alternate music. Um, for a long time, it, it's gone now. It finally shut down, but in its last few days, uh, well, last few years, it wasn't much more than a, than a store selling the CBGB t-shirts and stuff. It kind of, there are, there are stories about the bathrooms in it that <laughs> just, it was one of those clubs where you just didn't want to touch anything. Um, it's like, um, let's see, who went to USD? Punk gets its own magazine, and, and uh, of course, we'll see, as we talk about disco here, how, you know, it was, it was the antithesis of, of what disco represents. Punk in England takes off. Economic conditions there are horrible, high unemployment. The younger generation sees no future for them, so they're drawn to this type of music. While this is going on, on one aspect of music, on the other aspect of music, we have what becomes disco. Being somewhat of a music enthusiast, I thoroughly enjoyed the presentation. From an early age, I can remember my dad blasting Black Sabbath, ACDC, Alice Cooper, as well as the Ramones and Sex Pistols. Additionally, I grew up hearing a lot of Grateful Dead, which eventually morphed into a love for jazz. But when I was in my teens and early 20s, it was all about the fuck you attitude of punk rock, hardcore, and metal. What's up, dude? What's up? What's up? What's up, bro? Yeah, you're on my turf now, puppy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not so pissy, are you? <laughs> Hopefully he's chilled out so. Oh, yeah, there you go. Hey, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's Joe's tree. <laughs> Seafood gumbo? Yeah, shrimp gumbo. I'll ride down there in a bit. And okay, cool. check you guys out. Cool. Boke is a fellow from uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, I believe. Somewhere down on the bayou and uh, has offered to make uh, a shrimp gumbo. So I already ate dinner, but there's no way I'm missing that from uh, an authentic native Louisianan to try his gumbo. So I'm gonna head across this dry creek bed over to where everybody's staying over there. I already ate dinner, but I just can't resist. Uh, I got a native Louisiana in here. Oh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's bootleg, boat. though, brother. Bootleg? <laughs> yeah. Made with South Dakota ingredients? No, no, it's from home, but it's canned. Oh, it's canned? Oh, okay. That's all right. But it's good. Well, if you say it's good, all right. I'll take your word for it. It looks good. It's bootleg. <laughs> right on. You need water? Uh, if you got one, I'll take one. What you do uh, for for eats? How, how you uh, you eat out? You sandwich? You? Uh... Oh, I I, uh, I usually get a rotisserie chicken uh -huh. from the deli. Yeah. A lot of times I'll eat that, and then that'll last me a day. You know, put yeah. some greens in there. So greens like just a can of just whatever. A can of greens, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I liked it when I was down uh, in Mandeville. Because uh, they got Rouse's Market. Yep. In the deli. Yep. I was getting jumbo shrimp. Uh -huh. I swear to God, that big with the head on. Yep. Best shrimp I've ever had. Yep. Rouse's has a pretty oh, decent service. Pretty decent, that. man. They had it boiled with the crawfish, and they'd sell individual pieces of the boil. Like here's the sausage, here's the andouille, uh -huh. here's the koneka sausage. Andouille. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, oh. 
Oh, it's got that French twang. Correct. I could eat so good down there for cheap, man. Just from yeah. the deli. Uh, uh, Ross is, and they're all over now. Oh, yeah? Uh, they're in Iberia, Lafayette. Because okay. when I'm on the scooter, I bring an ice chest, small one. And I mostly do sandwich. Uh, I, in old days, I'd bring the coma stove and all that. But uh, it, mostly sandwiches and, you know, bananas, uh, peanuts. Yeah. You start work tomorrow? Uh, uh, Monday. Monday. Oh, Monday. I had my days wrong. I had my days wrong. I thought I started today, but it's actually Monday. Oh, today's Friday. Yeah. Before long, more and more of the usual suspects started to show up, including the mayor himself, Scooter Tramp Scotty. Place. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go there. We'll We're uh, going to the salad place. These, this guy just showed up. And what's your on, name? Uh, Will. Will, I forgot Will. We Will. already did that. Willie. Will. Yeah. Willie. And, uh, we did it, but I forgot it. <laughs> so this is what, a 93? Yes, this is a 93. Wow. How much did you pay for it? $2,000. And you got excellent choice in stickers, I have to say. Yes. <laughs> That's an old bag of mine. $2,000 gold wing. Yep. Come on, baby. Listen to that. Yeah. All right. Well, it's, I'm gonna. It's when I cut the video out. together, it's gonna be one click, yeah, smooth. You gonna meet us there? You gonna come by where I am? Come on, stop. Yeah, right. We're gonna go get some salad, just uh, hanging out and meeting some of the crazy bikers coming out here. Yeah, buddy. So. Loving the lifestyle. I'll see you guys down there. All right. We'll wait. What's up, man? Get the boulders out of the way. Really? Yeah, so I come down and I kick all the big boulders out once Man. the boulders go by. But probably twice a day in the morning and in the afternoons. I would, because I'm not the only one coming up and down here. Yeah. 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 So it just makes it a little easier. Like I said, I just had a new tire put on by Randy and, and I fucking hit that rock and just like it just shoved me sideways. God damn it. Appreciate you doing that. Yeah, oh hell yeah. We got a We're going up to the pizza ranch and get the salad bar if you want to come. Me and Scotty and Okay. Uh I'm not right up there, you have a Meet you up there. I just had okay. I just had breakfast about a half hour ago. Did you? <laughs> I go get a drink shit. And yeah, that's on the left. I know yep, where yep. it. Yep. Alright, yeah, I'll meet you up there. Cool, cool. We'll see you up there. Okay, take it easy, buddy. I have taken obviously to uh going on that side of the dry creek bed just because uh when I'm working the rallies I like to actually be able to sleep at night, so uh, but this is sort of like where most of the action happens. There's Scotty, obviously, in his usual spot. index finger and the ring finger is the same. Okay, so what are you saying? <laughs> what? The, the difference between what? They need you to find, to try to, at least one way you can try to find out if it's a real woman, is you look at her hands, even though my finger's <laughs> twisted, this finger on a man's almost always longer than the first finger, and on a woman right. it's generally the same length or shorter. Yeah, so they Yeah, not always though, I've seen women finger. that have a longer, that have this there's, finger longer, but it's rare. There's easier ways to check. Yeah. <laughs> there's easier. About halfway between Sturgis and Deadwood. Just got my uh, video uploaded, so... I noticed in Deadwood there's some uh, gravel roads leading deeper into the Black Hills National Forest, so let's go check it out.
So the uh, mountain that we just climbed up uh, obviously is Mount Roosevelt. This is uh, Mount Roosevelt Recreation Area, fittingly enough. There's a lot of cool gravel roads leading into the Black Hills and you know it's just kind of like I, you know I get a little bored because I tend to ride the same roads every year. To be on a road that I haven't been on is really cool. Looks like Bear Butte over that way. I'm gonna climb this hill and see if I can get a better vantage point. I'm assuming this is basically the top of this uh, Mount Roosevelt. I'm not sure how well you can see it but that's Bear Butte right there actually. Hello. Hi. Good. How, how far does this go? Oh, it's like, it's not too hard. It's, what is it, like? Like 10 minutes up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's pretty good views up there. Yes. And there's a tower. Worth you it. Can call. They tell me it's 10 minutes and it's worth it. So let's go. Nice jump hey. stroll. All right, there's the great Bear Butte. Franklin's Tower. Uh, that's a Grateful Dead song. I don't think that's what it's called. It's probably called Mount Roosevelt Tower. Steps are gonna suck. My knee is still a little jacked. Looks like there's no shortage of animals living in here. Isn't that cool? It's about 10 degrees cooler in this place. All the stone around me. Wow. Very cool sort of a panorama. You don't find a panorama a lot in the Black Hills. The rally's just about to kick off, a couple more days. Things are starting to get crazy. The traffic is, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, already getting fucking insane. It's nice to sort of get up here and, and be away from everything. This is sort of off of several miles of uh, steep gravel road, so. Um, naturally, there are less people up here. I have uh, really enjoyed uh, the last couple of days of hanging out and seeing friends and meeting people and talking to people. But you know, sometimes it's nice to have a break too. So I guess we have Belfouche over that way. Belfouche is due north. You know, that might be Belfouche right there. Yeah, that's Belfouche. There's certainly an argument that uh, uh, some of the prettiest camping places are also the hardest to get to and uh, I think there's a little bit of truth to that Right here, I'm sort of looking for uh, any kind of a little trail or a flat spot leading into the woods uh, where I could possibly gain access uh, and some tree cover and stuff. I'm not really seeing anything. There's a fence right there. Absolutely beautiful up here. You'd never know that just over that way, uh, all hell is about to break loose. It's so nice and peaceful. That guy's leaving. Wow, isn't this nice? Not a lot of good tree cover, but uh, somebody left some dog food, it looks like. Yeah, probably what I would do if I were interested in sleeping out here is uh, sort of make a little bit more of a distinct path 
uh, leading into the woods, find a nice flat spot, um, some good tree cover, and uh, and stay there. That looks like uh, the corner of Deadwood down there. So this is going to take us kind of around in a loop, and then back to Deadwood, I guess, leads like right over there. That wouldn't be a bad camping spot out there. Mike is definitely handling a lot better on this road than my ST would. Not really exerting a lot of energy to ride it. And uh, that's something I've noticed uh, both on the highway, uh, in the twisties, and uh, now on these kind of really bumpy, rocky roads like this. As I say, I'm not really exerting a lot of energy uh, in my arms and shoulders to kind of keep the thing upright. Super fun road. Not too crazy, not too technical. This is uh, definitely another side of the Black Hills. You know, typically a lot of these guys that come up here and work the rally, you know, they're seeing sort of a snapshot and riding kind of the same roads. And so they've sort of seen some of the Black Hills, but uh, you know, to me, actually getting in them like this and getting off the beaten path, uh, I feel like I'm really sort of experiencing them. And there's no traffic to speak of. I don't have to worry about anybody trying to kill me. Can't uh, really say enough about the, the versatility of this bike, just in uh, sort of everything I've taken it on. Uh, it's handled better than expected. I don't know if I would say exceptionally well, but certainly better than expected. This is all well maintained for that guy who lives back there. So back again to beautiful gravel. What a luxury. Just a nice day to uh, get off the beaten path. Boy, am I enjoying this. Interesting town of Deadwood. It's just crazy how we can go from all that crazy stuff up in the mountains, rocks and stuff, and uh, you come down to the bottom of the mountain, you got all this. It's always one of the highlights of my year to come to Sturgis, especially before the rally starts. I like to see my friends, ride around the Black Hills, and explore new places. Now that I'd gotten my head straight, I was ready to start work. What do you got there? I got a can of chicken pot pie that I got out of an abandoned house. <laughs> okay? And a spoon. This is going to go bad. It might explode when you open it. Yeah, but I'm going to open it close to you. Well, I'm going to open it right in front of your thing there. But the reason I got it is, is because the date on it is November of 2021. So what's that make okay. it? A year old? Yeah, not so, even. Or past its date. Yeah. Well, in the coming, in the coming fucking apocalypse, right? Right. That everybody knows is coming now. You may, we may be, it'd be kind of interesting to see if a can will last that long. I'm really good at telling bad food. Yeah. As you know. It didn't explode. That's good. I'm sure it's fine. Well.
That's a Vagabond Gourmet right there. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Chicken. Hummus, you got everything, fancy Hummus, stuff, man. Bread, boom, sandwich. I forgot to turn this off. And this is the Vagabond refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> you well, could, he's looking you got, for a refrigerator for his shelf. <laughs> you got, <laughs> he's been trying to find a refrigerator. It's good for, for at least two to three days. It's good for at least two to three days. 